I've got a thought for you. What will humans eat in the future? It's a question I've been asking myself for a while now, and as it turns out, there's actually a lot of research that's taken place on this subject. What we eat is constantly changing and evolving, and not all humans eat the same. Every diet I'm talking about in this video is an incredibly generalized version of the future. You're not necessarily going to have to eat specific foods, but other foods may not be available at the time. So why will diets in the future be any different? Why can't our diets just stay the same? In order for people of the future to be supplied with enough macro and micronutrients, innovations are badly needed for three main factors in the future, including climate change, population growth, and agricultural land availability. Population growth is a big problem to account for. By the year 2050, there will be almost 10 billion people on Earth. At that rate, there's 10,000 new mouths to feed every single hour. Climate change will only add to the pressures of global food production. The U.S. Department of Agriculture predicts that global warming is very likely to affect global, regional, and local food security by disrupting food availability, decreasing access to food, and making utilization more difficult. Dramatically shrinking agricultural land availability isn't helping in our battle to feed the human race either. From 1980 to 2050, we will have lost almost half of our agricultural land. This suggests that the crops we harvest and the food we eat will significantly change in the next couple of decades. So what will humans eat in the future? All of these foods are based on predictions of what will be available in the year 2050, which is ultimately not that far away. Our main supplies of protein are expected to include cell-cultured meats, plant-based meats, and insects. While none of these things may sound that enjoyable right now, they're currently being worked on very fast to become the most sustainable options for the future. Believe it or not, insects are a great supply of protein, fiber, minerals, and vitamins, and are currently being eaten all around the world in places like Thailand, Mexico, and Zimbabwe. Although you may be disgusted by the ideas of eating insects, they won't necessarily be served to you in their raw form. Other insect-based products include flour or paste to use in cooking, pasta, energy bars, and other snack items. Now, I've actually got some Italian lasagna roasted cricket snacks to try today. Enjoy bugs in a more proctored sense. Don't just eat them off the ground or wherever you find them. They clearly hold their original shape. Oh, they're not bad. Hmm. Weirdly crunchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lab-grown meat, better known as cell-cultured meat, is meat grown in a lab from an animal cell. This cell is fed nutrients and growth factor components to guide its development into a piece of meat. It can be cooked like meat, tastes and smells identical, and holds the same nutritional value. Cell-cultured meat is not yet available in mainstream markets, but there are currently over 70 cultured meat startup companies around the world. I found this in a European article about lab-grown meat. In comparison to conventionally produced European meat, the team estimates cultured meat would involve approximately 7 to 45 percent lower energy use, 78 to 96 percent lower greenhouse gas emissions, 99 percent lower land use, use, and 82 to 96 percent lower water use depending on the type of meat. The very first lab-grown burger created in 2013 by Dr. Mark Post cost $325,000 to produce. Today, a single patty is valued at only $10. As it turns out, cell-cultured meat has already come a long way and will continue to do so. To round off the proteins of the future, let's talk about plant-based meats. Of the three meats of the future I'm talking about in this video, I'd say plant-based meats are the furthest along into being implemented into our daily diets. The goal of plant-based meats are to look, taste, and smell like meat, but solely contain plants. The key to the meaty taste is a molecule called heme, which is the molecule that makes our blood red and is also found in plants like soy. Unfortunately, heme is made in the roots of soy plants, which are difficult to dig up. Using genetic modifying, we have the ability to trick yeast into producing heme to give this fake meat its meaty taste. I haven't tried a ton of plant-based meats, but of the ones I've tried, these are absolutely the best. These are Morningstar Vegetizer Popcorn Chicken. They legitimately taste better than actual oven chicken. They're so good. This next food has been eaten for thousands of years in Japan, Korea, and China. Seaweed. 
Much of the world's soil is moderately to highly degraded, which makes marine plants incredibly important in the future. Seaweed can also be a great ingredient for soups, stews, salads, cakes, and smoothies, and contains lots of fiber and various vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. In addition to those insects, I've also got some seaweed to try. Just like seaweed. <laughs> Um, I, these are not good. It tastes like it comes from the ocean. No, it, I mean, it's, a, it's advertised as a snack food. For me, I don't think I'll be snacking on seaweed in the future. Here's a food I've never heard of before. False bananas. Now, the false banana isn't exactly what you think it is. The fruit part of this plant is inedible, but the starchy stems and roots can be fermented and used to make porridge and bread. This plant is currently only being grown in Ethiopia, where around 20 million people rely on it for food. This crop could potentially feed over 100 million people in the next few decades, with the possibility of being grown in nearby African countries, including Kenya and Uganda. Some of the other highly predicted foods for the future include jellyfish, edible food packaging, cacti, and mushrooms. If you'd like to learn more about these future foods, I'll leave some links in the description. I'd like to reiterate, all of these predicted food changes will take place over the next 30 years. You won't suddenly not be able to buy beef anymore they'll slowly be replaced with more sustainable options than I mentioned earlier in this video. In 30 years, don't expect plant-based meats or cell-cultured meats to taste like how they do today. Expect them to taste like real meat. Climate change and population growth will dramatically affect our diets in the future. But be hopeful. There's a lot of people and a lot of companies working to produce the best food we have under the limitations coming soon. Give some of these seemingly outlandish products a chance as they may be the best options we have for food in the future. Thanks for watching.